All right, welcome to our Sword Nation team call. It's Tuesday, and I don't know what day it is. I try to say the date, but usually I forget. So, uh, the middle of March sometime. Eighth, thank you. It's Tuesday, March 8th, 2016, and we are so stoked because we had these two awesome success partners that have never met that we kind of match made in a group chat and um, they are like BFFs now. They're gonna be coaching or hosting our call tonight. And the cool thing about um, both of them is they're very different in the approach they have with this business and their, in their life and, and different things. Um, but there are some similarities too. They both have two young kids, two boys and then two girls. Funny, right? And they both are married to somebody in the military. They're both used to, um, like traveling around and being very independent. They both used to work in the, what would you call it? The prettier face and hair industry. <laughs> um, Christy was a makeup artist and Catherine did hair, but still with all those similarities, the way they go about their business is very different. Um, Christy Salcido is a cancer survivor. I think that's a big thing to mention. And Catherine is a beautiful singer. She sings in her church and um, uses that to really connect with people and to touch people's lives. But you guys, one of the coolest thing is that they set the school to go diamond together and they really worked with each other every single week, every single day, and they hit it within a couple weeks of each other because they were pushing each other and sharing ideas. And so it's important to find a success partner that's gonna encourage you, support you, share ideas with you, get your back, and also help you to move forward and to not stay stuck where you are and not tolerate your BS or your excuses, right? You, you give them a hug, then you go, whoosh, get back in the game. So, because this is business, and we have to approach it like a business in order to be successful. So, I'm going to go ahead and mute out, and you guys, I'm not sure who's going first, but go ahead and take over. Oh, and I love you both. I'm very thankful that you found me on Facebook. <laughs> we love you. And excuse my voice, my children have croup and adults can't really get it, but I got this part, so. <laughs> um, yes, I am so excited, so excited. And the way that we're gonna do this is um, my coach Rachel is actually gonna talk a teeny bit in the beginning because she recruited like 16 Success Club points worth of coaches alone in like one month. So um, Emma wanted her to jump on, <laughs> jump on really quick and just um, give a couple pointers on recruiting and things like that. And then Christy and I are going to jump right into it, tell you a little bit about ourselves and get to the meat of it all. But um, Rachel, are you there? You're gorgeous and I know you're here somewhere. There you are. You're so pretty. Everyone has a lipstick but me. <laughs> you gotta get on that. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, it's weird because Gary's listening in the other room. So I'm like, I can hear it in the other room. He's like, I need to watch you. And I'm like, okay, well, don't judge me. So um, anyways, I get really nervous speaking in front of people. You wouldn't know that because I never meet a stranger. But when I get in front of people, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. Okay. So anyways, um, I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about like, um, so first thing first, I'm a mom. I have three kids. Um, I just had a baby seven weeks ago. Um, so needless to say, I have my plate is, um, but Catherine reached out to me like when I was like, I was like 15, um, weeks pregnant and I was like, okay, I have done it to Andy before. And I was like, you know what? Okay. I'm going to jump in and try out this whole coaching thing. So I worked out every day. I did Shakeology, everything the whole time I was pregnant, but I was really struggling, like hitting success club. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, and then I realized that I actually needed to change my mindset because I thought that I couldn't do it because I was pregnant. So I was like, well, I don't have a transformation story, but really I did have a transformation story. Um, so my recovery has been amazing because I kept up the entire pregnancy. Um, so I planted a ton of seeds that whole time, like during the whole learning process of the first 
um, nine months because I've been a coach for almost nine months now. So that whole time I was just planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. And it, there was a couple of times where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, like, I don't know because me and Gary both were doing Shakeology. And so I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to afford this anymore. You know, I'm not hitting success club. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And of course I was using all the scripts and I totally was like, I was just using everybody else's stuff instead of being myself. So after I had the baby, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? No more BS. I'm just going to be real with people. And if they want it, great. If they don't, I don't care. That's totally fine. Like, I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to, I'm going to be rocking a hot bad, whether or not you are or not, you know, like it doesn't matter. So that's what I started to do. And people seeds that I planted months and months and months ago started coming out. I was like, Hey, I want to know what you're doing. You look great. Your recovery is going so well. You have such a positive attitude. How are you doing it? And like, seriously, that's all that, that's all that happened. Um, and then when they sign up with a challenge pack, uh, most of my um, people that have signed up have been military spouses. So I'm like, why you like, you just need to be a coach. Like, why would you, when Rhonda was on the call a couple of months ago, she said, why do you even sign up challengers? Everybody should be a coach because you're going to pay for this Shakeology. Might as well go ahead and take advantage of the discount. Once you get it the first time, you're going to be like, oh my God, this stuff is amazing. So yeah, I want to get it again. So sign them up as a coach. And then if they don't like it, it's just as simple to go, you know, to not to just cancel it. So that's pretty much what I've done and it's worked for me. So all my coaches have just been like challenges to begin with. And I'm like, Oh, you're going to be a coach too. And you're going to like it. And we're going to make you some money and you're going to change some lives. And that's just, that's it. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for having me. Uncle. <laughs> Thank you. I love you so much. Rachel was the first coach I ever signed you guys. And I, we've been coaches the same amount of time. <laughs> by like a month um so yes I love it and I love you and you are awesome and you're just any and if anyone has excuses send them Rachel's way y'all she's got a newborn a daughter who's under four a adorable precious son who you homeschool and I'm like no 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 <laughs> okay so what I want to do is I did make a PowerPoint um, and to be completely honest is to keep me on topic because, and Christy's, Christy too, we're both like squirrel, you know. Um, and <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and share screen because that's on mine. And then um, please don't feel like I'm talking constantly because I promise Christy's going to talk too. Where's my share screen? There it is. Uh, okay. <clears throat> do, 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 do. No, go to the beginning. You guys, technology is new to me. <laughs> I'm like an old lady. Okay, so I called it to Diamond and Beyond because we really wanted to put together not only ways that we have gotten to it finally because we struggled to, but ways these things can take you further if you just keep implementing them. And I love this quote with all of my heart. Everyone wants to be a diamond, but very few are willing to get cut. You guys, diamonds are not formed or born beautiful. They are gross and they are funky, and you probably walk over some as you're going out your everyday life. So, a little bit about me. I'm a big goober, um, and I put that in there. I was just tired of being dull. Um, so, basically, a little bit about my story. Um, is I, you would not, gosh, I wish I, wish I could just show you guys how sad I was back in the day. Um, I was Gothic when I was in high school. I'm an identical twin and I love my mom with all my heart, but she was one of those twin moms who's like, oh, you're, you're good, but you're great when you're together. So <laughs> I've literally never done anything by myself in my entire life, not even being born. So, so it was really, really scary to jump out of the box and do something like this because this is all me. This is mine. So, um, and I have um, an amazing, amazing military spouse. So, of course, you know, I married him when I was 20 and I went from my mommy doing everything for me 
to my husband doing everything for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's been a wild, crazy ride. And um, most all of my life, I've suffered with depression and anxiety and OCD. I got the whopper. And um, I always tell everyone, I'm like, I don't have a very good transformation story in terms of physical because I've always been obsessed with my weight. It comes with the, the depression and anxiety. And um, to the point where it was just sickening, I got down to, I'm six foot, and I got down after I had my daughter to 135 pounds. And underweight for me is 135 on the BMI chart because I wasn't eating. I was like, I just had a baby. I'm fat. I've got to fix this. So I just wasn't eating. And I was miserable. And being up here was like being in a boxing match. It was sad. And I would just look in the mirror and people probably thought I was vain, but I was just hating what I saw and I was picking apart little pieces here and there. And then I would see Emma and she's this, she's so excited all the time and I love it. But, and, um, I was that co I was that person guys that literally, I never really commented on her things. I don't think not even once when she messaged me, I didn't message her back. And then just one day, it had been like a year, I was like, okay, let's do this. So I am living proof that seeds being planted is so important. It's just vital. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much about me. I have two beautiful girls, and I'm not suffering with depression. I'm an overcomer of it because it is not getting me I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm going to show it as boss. And I used to quit everything. And um, this is the first thing in my life besides beauty school. I've, I haven't quit. Don't judge by the height. I never played sports. Mm -mm. I tried it. Didn't work out. <laughs> Not athletic. There's the big difference between athletic and fit. So, <laughs> all right. That's enough talk about me. I will let my beautiful BFF take over. I can't find my mute, so I'll just shut my mouth. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Thanks for um, taking the time to jump on tonight. So, um, I see a lot of new faces, and then, of course, I see some familiar faces. But for those of you that don't know me, my name is Christy Salcedo. And um, let's see, I've been coaching nine months. <laughs> Something about that number nine here. Um, and okay. So I'm a mother of two little boys that are almost seven and five. They are full of energy. Um, I'm also a military wife. My husband's been in the Marine Corps for 15 years and we've moved all over. And I was a makeup artist for um, over 10 years. I was with Dior and I work predominantly for Nordstrom. And what else about me? I'm also a cancer survivor. Um, so when I was 30, which was two years ago, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. And I didn't catch it early. It was pretty advanced. It was already traveling around. It had gotten into my lymph nodes. Um, to say I was shocked was an understatement and terrified, all those things can't even like put it into words. Um, but it was a major wake up call for me. And again, I will put out there that I had been friends with Emma on Facebook for about four years, you guys, <laughs> three and a half or four years. And she had actually messaged me once when I was still um, with Nordstrom and asked if I wanted to, you know, get started on a program. And I was like, I don't have time to busy. Meanwhile, I was like, chugging three or four coffees a day and just living a super unhealthy life. No, no, Alex, I'm so sorry. My husband's not here. And so I have my two little ones are running around. Um, so I actually, you know, declined at that time, but then I saw all her posts while I was going through what I was going through. And there was a time that was really dark for me that I was in the hospital and just didn't have anything to do, but scroll Facebook. I was really sick when I was going through a treatment. And I remember just seeing her posts. And just like Catherine said, she was always so and still is happy and positive and vivacious and out doing crazy things, hiking around with a baby on her back and just being a warrior. And it inspired me. Um, and so as soon as I was done with my treatment, 
which caused me to gain a lot of weight um, because of steroids. I was like, Emma, please help me. But little did I know that it would like completely change my entire life. Um, after a few months, I retired from being a makeup artist and left that career to do this full time. And I love it. I've never regretted that for a second. Um, it's extremely fulfilling to me. I don't think that, I think that the, something was definitely missing in my career and I just could never put my finger on it. Um, but I don't have that. I'm very fulfilled and I, I, I love doing this. I love it. I wake up every day with a fire in my belly to do this. Um, so that's a little bit about me and I'm going to turn it back over to Catherine and we'll get started with our presentation on how to get to diamond and beyond. Are you there, Catherine? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself because my um, slideshow was on, so I didn't have my mouse. I was like, ah! <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna leave it on this because I need my mouse. So the way <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> I'm like, you're in the knot. Um, so the way I approach this is, and let me just say, we're going to have a lot of bullet points. Please don't feel overwhelmed because I know it is so easy. We talked about this this morning. It's so easy to get on these calls and be like, oh my gosh, I am doing everything wrong. There's so many things I need to add to my plate. What am I, when am I going to do this? What am I going to do? No, write everything down. But just, Chelsea gave me this advice and I love her. Um, write everything down and just implement a couple things like a week, a month, whatever you're comfortable with. This does not need to add stress. It's meant to add value. So, the who. Um, first of all, the way that we should be approaching this is you need to have an avatar, an avatar of your perfect coach, your perfect um, customer, the person that you want to have in your life and on your team. And you need to write it down because there's something very powerful about pen to paper. If you watch Shaleen Johnson, she lives by it. Do it. So write it all down and then put it out into the universe and all that fun stuff. Um, and then when you post, post like you're posting to them. Don't think, oh, well, if I post this, it might upset these people. If I post this, it might upset this person. Don't even think that. Just post like you're posting to this person that you want on your team. And it's not showing all of it, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Okay. Just don't mute me. <laughs> and when you, um, let me see. Yes, just don't invite people just to invite them. What you want to do is you always want to get to know people. This is what this is about. People need to know that you care. And I know that we all do, but it's so easy to come off like we don't. I know I'll get those messages from like the, the skincare people and it's like, hey, um, I'm excited. I'm like, I don't know you. Like, <laughs> you don't know me. You don't care who I am. In fact, I messaged you about coaching, like not coaching, but like a challenge like a month ago. And you ignored me. So, so don't be those people. Okay. So form, if you haven't heard about it yet, it's a great way just to think of, you know, a way to direct the conversation. It's family, occupation, recreation, and then message. Get to know them and be honestly interested in what they have to say. And if they say something, respond. Like um, if they say, Oh, you know, I'm just, I'm not, up, you know, feeling my best. My kids are running around. You're like, oh, well, I've got a challenge for you. Here's how it's going to go and blah, 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 blah. No, don't word vomit all that. Be like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry you're feeling that way. I get it. My kids drive me crazy, girl. The other day, you know, just like you're talking to a friend. So that is the who. And Christy, you went Oh, that's, and here's my example of my avatar. That's my family. I'm my avatar. So, so I want a go-giver. I want someone who's self-driven, compassionate, friend, mom, 
willing to learn and grow. If you don't find people who are willing to grow in this, they're not going to go anywhere because people who feel like they know it all don't know it all at all. In fact, they don't know anything. So, and yes, positive. Okay, Christy, your turn. <laughs> hey girl, I think the slide is not changing, so we may have to take it out of um, presentation mode. Okay, let me see. Okay. Um, so we missed the avatar part, but we heard it. There we go. Okay. Thing. Okay, so I think that this is major, you guys. Talking about the win. All right, so just real talk here. Um, I think it's very important to get clear on where you want to go in this business. If you're looking to just um, pay for your Shakeology, that's going to have different, um, oh my gosh, my kids are crazy. That's going to have different time frames that you need to stick to rather than if you want to build this into a full-time business and retire your husband. So based on those goals, I think you need to schedule work hours and stick to them. Just uh, do not, you know, seriously, time block. If um, this is something you're going all into, you may find out that you are up at five in the morning and not going to bed till 11 o'clock at night because we have people in different time zones and you have to be okay with that. It's not going to be forever. It's just temporary while things are getting going. Um, but it's a sacrifice that you have to want to make for the long-term goals that you set. Um, so I would just, like it says, just do it, commit to it. Be realistic about what time you have. And you guys, when I started this, I was still full time as a business manager for an almost million dollar Dior um, account. So I was doing posts in the bathroom. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> I was checking in on my lunch break. So um, there is time. And I, and I would still come home and deal with family and make dinner and stuff. Um, you also need to make sure that you're posting about three times a day, three to five times a day. And don't just put up um, just something because you feel like you have to put it put it up. The way that um, <laughs> the way that I um, have kind of begun to see my Facebook is you need to kind of disconnect from it being your like personal vent space or anything like that. Don't post up anything negative. You need to think about what your audience is seeing. Are they seeing? things of value. Don't just put up something to put it up. Don't put up any rants or political things that are going to cause controversy, that kind of stuff. You need to make things of value. So I kind of see my, um, my Facebook as kind of a reality reel of my life because I am living this every day, day in and day out. Um, I try to post things of what I'm really doing along the day. You know, when I have a fail, when I have a win, it's all real. So um, I think that's really important to be authentic in your posts and have it be a value. Um, and again, you're going to want to try to appeal to your specific avatar. If you try to appeal to everybody, you're not going to appeal to anybody because it's going to come off really generic. Um, and again, like it says, if you really want this, you're going to find a way to make time. So back over to Catherine. And I know that a lot of you already are probably thinking, okay, guys, we know all this. And the funny thing is I did too. I didn't make diamond for 10 months. And it's because I did everything wrong in the beginning. It's because I tried to reinvent the wheel. Ask Emma. I tried to reinvent the wheel. I tried to just do my own thing and it didn't work. So I really felt like we need to go back to the fundamentals of all of this and focus on it and know that these things work. And we just tweaked it a little bit to um, fit this. So yeah, I just had to say that. Okay, the where. Master one or two social medias. Don't freak out about all of them. Like I don't, I know I personally don't have a website because I don't know a whole lot about websites. So my two are Instagram and Facebook. Those are my two. Yours can be whatever you want. The less stress you put on yourself in this business, the more fun you're going to have because it's going to feel less like a job and more like just you having fun in your life and sharing your life with other people. 
And like Christy said, your Facebook tells your story. And when you look at your Facebook, go through the last five posts and be like, okay, if someone new comes on here, <coughs> excuse me, are they going to know within the last five posts that I am a coach? Is something in here related to coaching? Not beach body, not like a beach body ad for 20, 22 hardcore, nothing like that. Something you did that shows that you are a coach and that you love it. And um, yeah, branch out. I know another way Rachel got umpteen million coaches is she actually talked to people in her neighborhood. My new coach, Vanessa, is my next door neighbor. We've been neighbors for three years, you guys, and I did not say a word to her. It was awful and then one day I was just like hello <laughs> we've hung out like every day except right now because croup is gross um so yes and um summer is coming have you done a fit club yet and I say this one for me because I have not I'm gonna admit that to you guys because we're real in here I have not done a fit club my excuse has been I don't have anywhere to do it um, you can do it in churches and things like that. My church has a lot of hoops you have to jump through. So I'm, on, I'm in the process of getting those hoops jumped through. Um, but I have not done one yet. I have no more excuses, but I did and I needed to stop. So, okay. And let me, oops, scroll down. You silly thing. There we go. Your turn, Christy. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, did I skip one? No, sorry. Um, okay. So the why, um, you've heard this a lot that you need to have a very powerful why in this and you hear it a lot because of how important it is. You guys, I mean, if your why is just, well, I want to make a ton of money really fast. Well, that's not going to work out. You need to have a why that is so powerful that it's just, it, it's enough. And there's a b burning building analogy here, which honestly I think Catherine could explain a little bit better. But one that I related to really well was um, something I heard Lindsay Matway say. Um, imagine that you're here and you're on this building and this is everything you are. And then over here, there's another building. And this is everything you want for your family and yourself. And there's a tightrope connected between the two. Are you, is your why so powerful over that you're prepared to walk along the tightrope to get over there? For me, it is. For me, this is so much more than just making money. This is um, a way for me to positively impact people with the pain I went through with cancer and the things that I wish I would have known about prevention. Um, this is also a way to earn financial freedom from my family, to be home for my family, for my children and not working 12 to 14 hour days and having them with a nanny and never being there. Um, my why is really, really deep. So I suggest if you don't have a super deep why, um, it doesn't have to be a cancer story, but dig, dig deep about how you want to impact people with your why, because we all have a story that somebody needs to hear. Um, and that somebody can relate to and you never know whose life you're going to change. Um, so the other thing would be mastering your mindset because, all right, it's really easy to be hyped up in the beginning and like, okay, I just hit Emerald. Okay. I've, I've hit success club a few months in a row and now I'm going to start looking at all the other coaches. And let me tell you guys, don't, don't do that. I mean, if you're going to look at a coach to see what they do, like uh, follow them and then unfollow them after a week because you will get caught up in comparison trap because I have done it just not that long ago. I was hung up comparing myself to um, somebody that's doing really well. And I was like, I don't have, I don't have crazy rock hard abs. Um, I'm still a little bit chunky. Uh, I didn't hit success club 2000. Um, I did not do this and I do not have 9,000 followers and I was like, I'm doing everything wrong. And that is the quickest way to fail. You guys comparison, um, is the, is a thief of joy and we all know it's terrible, but I suggest if you're following a lot of coaches, so you don't have to unfriend, if you're friends with them, don't unfriend them, just unfollow them. Um, and 
along with that, I would also um, jump into, we all talk about personal development, but personal development, Catherine and I are addicted to. And I can't tell you like how much it has impacted us since we began this journey. Um, especially, you know, don't just grab random personal development books. Try to focus them on your weaknesses um, and admit your weaknesses. For me, it's being like too much of a people pleaser and to the point where I get run over. So right now I'm reading a book about setting Christian boundaries that are healthy. So just focus on something that you know you need to grow in. Um, if you're already, you know, a great leader and you feel confident in that, don't, you know, fool with that right now. Work on your weaknesses. That is huge. Um, and like it says, you're only um, going to go as far as you grow. And that's completely true. Like uh, your business is kind of a direct uh, reflection of how much you've grown and, you know, how far you've come. Consistency and confidence are everything in this. So if you've got low self-esteem, it's going to come off in your posts. Um, I can't tell you, I'm not being mean. I will occasionally see posts that I can automatically tell are a little bit inauthentic. Um, and that's okay, you know, cause I did that a lot in the beginning, but you have to find yourself in all of this. And that is the power that we, we have the power to help others do that. And that's so huge, but yeah, you're only going to go as far as you grow. Try to remember that. Yeah, and I just have to say on that, I know that I know what some of you are probably thinking. Oh, well, you don't understand. I've just never had confidence. I'm not like you guys. Um, it doesn't come easy to me. And may I just say, it does not come easy. Confidence is not something you're born with. It is a muscle that you have to work and you have to develop. I used to walk around feeling so small that it was sad. I was just obsessed with what people were thinking about me and I was negative and my self-talk was insane. It was insane. And if I can do this, anybody can do it. And if you knew me back when, you would know that. But just trust and believe this is something that is important. And one of the things that really set my heart on fire after I talked to Emma um, with one of my, you know, the Emma talks that we get that we all love. <laughs> she, she inspires us to do something that scares us. I jumped in and I purchased the um, Crazy um, Confidence, Courageous Confidence Club through Shalene Johnson. It's not that much. It's not like her crazy business one. But um, yeah, it was, it was an investment. But you have to invest in yourself and it will pay off because that confidence is going to show through. So. Let me see. Go to the next one, you silly thing. Oh, wait. Okay. I get the fun one. The how. <laughs> I am one of those people where I'm like, okay, I know what I have to do, but how? How do I do it? So <clears throat> there's a couple on here we already mentioned, like unfollow coaches. I had to do that. I was a huge comparison junkie as well. I was like, okay, well, they made a video. Maybe I need to make a video, but what if I'm not good at it? And that is what the first one is about. Stick to your DNA. If you're not good at videos and they make you so uncomfortable that you just, you can't stand it, then don't stress about making videos. Yes, we should all try to get better at things like that, but if it's not your strong point, focus on things that you're good at. If you're amazing at making graphics and making ads your own, keep doing that. It's, it doesn't need to be stressful. People need to see you, not things that you're trying to do to be like other people. Um, and one thing that I did in the beginning, I overthought everything I was posting. I was like, okay, what am I going to post about? What can I put? I need to look up something I can post. I need to do this. And it's just, it's too stressful. Just get it away. Yes, it needs to add value to people, but it can still be fun. Like, I posted a picture of my sink that's full of dishes the other day, and I was like, anybody else got this problem? <laughs> you know, you can make people laugh, make them interact with the posts, and they don't need to be, like, crazy, like, 
tell me your biggest fears in the comments. They don't need to be stuff like that. They, people want to be able to do short answers. Like Emma's been doing a lot of the fun ones where it's like, do this emoji if you're feeling this. And that's so fun because people are lazy and they don't want to type much. But when you get their interaction, it's fun. And honestly, the posts that I get the most feedback on are ones of personal accomplishments of mine. Like when I auditioned for The Voice, I got like 300 likes on that picture, you guys. That's insane for me, at least right now. And I got like 100 comments. Stuff that you're doing and you're succeeding in, people want to root for somebody. They want to see an underdog go high. That is why this. when people are like, oh, I can't do that job. I'm not fit. I'm not at coach level. I'm like, I'm not at coach level. I'm a hot mess daily. And it's fine. You just, you have to show people that you're a hot mess, but you're still going. You're not sitting on the couch watching, you know, I don't know what's on TV because I don't watch TV. You're not watching daytime television just eating all day. You're actually trying. Don't move in fear, move in faith. And the way I had to do this is I had to look at fear in a different way. You have to look at fear as your excitement. Like, don't think I'm scared. Think I'm excited. I, I'm ready to do this. That's why I feel this way. It, it doesn't have to hold you back. And um, I also had to, I had to really do a gut check. Um, and this might hurt, but I'm going to say it anyway. If your business isn't doing well, it's your fault. It's not your upline's fault. It's not, it's, it's not the coach down the street who's getting better business than you and taking all your clients. It's not, you know, um, your kid's fault because they won't stop running around. It's not your sister's. It is your fault if you're not doing well in this. And I say it with love because I needed to hear it. We all need to hear it. And it's a little bit of a gut check, but it, it gets your butt moving. You're like, you know what? This is mine. And if I want to do well in this, then I've got to take it and I've got to master it. And guys, that's what it takes to be awesome at this, is getting to that point where you're like, okay, I don't know what to do here, but I'm going to keep going. Making the decision at this time next year, you're still going to be here no matter what. Whether all your coaches quit, which not going to happen because you're going to be awesome, but you get my point. No matter what happens, I'm going to be here next year. That is what this takes. Okay, and I love this. There are 400,000 coaches, yes, and that can be a scary number sometimes, but there's only one you, one. That is why it is so important to really make this your own. You are not Beachbody, you are you. I am Catherine, I am the only spunky, really, really too energized, positive redhead, and I own it, and if people don't like it, Bye. You know, it's, and who cares if someone doesn't like that you invited them again and they block you. Okay. What's going to happen? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. They will be miserable and you will be happy because you've got that negativity out of your life. Okay. Have an amazing success partner, which I do. Um, yeah. Having someone to just not so much, vent on it's not about that it's it's about working through things together and having someone to hold you accountable and having someone where you're like okay they're counting on me so I can't let them down that is what this is about and it's about helping each other with your weaknesses and your strengths and just you know just getting through it because guys I mean sometimes this can be hard it's life nothing Thing is going to be dandelions and roses all the time. This job is amazing and it's a blessing, but it's not perfect. Nothing is. And so having that person is just amazing. And you also really need to build a strong team culture in your team. I don't care if you have one coach, two coaches, build a team 
like just love for each other. Even if you're an Emerald with two coaches, start doing a Zoom together once a week. It doesn't take much. You can see how each other are doing and talk about goals, talk about, you know, what you're excited about, talk just anything. And that way, as you grow, you will have that strong foundation and you're not going to get all these coaches dropping like flies because they feel loved because that's what we all want. We just want the support and the love. And of course we get that from Emma, but you have to create it in your own little, your own little slice of paradise. So, okay. I told you I love to talk. It's why I'm good at videos. <laughs> Yeah, Catherine and I both have the gift of gab. That's something uh, that comes with having worked in like the industry we did for so long. We can talk to anybody. Um, so I just wanted to retouch on the success partner thing really quickly. So it's going to be easy, you guys. You don't have to overthink it. Don't, you know, who do you click with? Sometimes you just naturally click with another coach, and that's the way it happened for Catherine and I. So sometimes you just get each other. So if that happens, you know, hit that person up and be like, hey, uh, what are you doing this month? And that, it'll just kind of naturally evolve. So um, I, can, I can honestly say that if I didn't have Catherine in this, that I don't know where I'd be at because there's been days where she's been like, you need to do this, this, I'll do this, this. And yeah, I don't want to let her down. So, you know, um, Instead of taking a nap, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna do it. Just FYI. So, anyways, back to getting coaches started right, which is a big thing in achieving um, diamond. Because you want to be able to make sure your coaches are able to um, achieve success as well. Don't overthink it. Just keep it simple. Um, when you first get them started up, send them a welcome email. Um, and don't you don't have to reinvent the wheel like. Um, use Emma's one she sent you. Reword it a little bit. Tweak it. Um, have in there the about me form. Have in me, sorry, the about me form. <laughs> and um, have them fill that out. And schedule a time to have the, your first call with them. And during that time, you can really get to know them on a deeper level. Um, and find out what their goals are and kind of break them down for them so that they can achieve them easily. Um, you're also going to want to emphasize success club five and what it is and why it's important. Um, and have them talk about, you know, there are things like, for example, open for business posts. That's a big deal when they first announce that. So you're going to want to be able to cheer them on. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Um, have them make a list of a hundred people that they know. Have them use a memory jogger. Um, in the back office have them invite to a day don't have them um <laughs> i'm sorry you guys <laughs> have a seat have a seat yes okay yeah i just let him have a peep i must be crazy um so <laughs> he's all you're also gonna um want to talk to them about emerald and why it benefits them you guys this does not have to be complicated um real life for sure um Try to think of Emerald as just you and two people. Uh, that second person can be your husband, your boyfriend, somebody, you know, that's important to you right here. It can be, yeah, your mom, whoever. Um, and then you plus two. And think about just adding in two coaches every three to four weeks or quicker, depending on how, how fast you want to move the business. But just two at a time, two at a time, two at a time. Teach your coaches to do two at a time. Two at a time. Don't overcomplicate it. That's it's easy. Another thing is make sure, my opinion, um, that if you have somebody that's a repeat Shakeology buyer, ask them why the heck they're still your customer. They need to join the team. They need to become coaches so that they can get a twenty five percent discount. I mean, I do not want my customers to have to pay <laughs> the um, you know the shipping and all that jazz, they don't need to do that. So yes, just turn them into a coach at that point. Make sure that you give everybody recognition for their little things, you know, like maybe they did their first business po first um, post. Recognize them for it. Recognize them for the first time they sell a challenge pack. 
be their cheerleader for a little bit. Um, it can be scary getting started and you want to be able to kind of <laughs> cheer them along. Definitely. Okay, Catherine. Yeah, and I also wanted to touch on that is it's also really important to give them the confidence to go out on their own because with, you know, realizing that this is your business, they need to know that they can do this on their own. Like that you are their mentor, you are not their boss, you're not going to be there to be like, hello, you didn't do the training, do it. You're not going to be holding their hand through this. And um, on that note, um, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And what do I mean by that? I do not like criticism. I don't know if it's a childhood issue or something, but I take it really bad. Like tears, it's sad. So, but I had to get, un I had to get okay with being told, hey, um, you might want to tweak that a little bit, just, just a little bit, or maybe if we do it this way, or if your coach is giving you suggestions, they're not criticizing you, they're helping you to be the best that you can be, and I know I just sounded like a commercial, but it's true. So, um, do do do. Yeah. Okay, and I just wanted to give you guys this because I have gotten a lot of people um, as new coaches, they're like, well, I haven't been doing this that long. How do I invite people if I don't really feel quite comfortable? So I came up with this, and remember, scripts are just guidelines. Tweak things. Make it like you would speak. Um, but basically, just show people how excited you are about what's to come. You don't have to have this amazing, I make $50,000 a month story, and um, we live in the Bahamas now. You don't need all that. You just need how excited you are, and just, just uh, you're like, I'm ready to do this. Are you ready to do this with me? And that is what you need. I do not know what just happened. I don't know what that is. What happened? Something that I didn't do that. I did not do that. Okay, let's. My computer is being possessed by what is happening? Who is? I don't know what happened. I don't know what I just did. Christy. Christy. I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah. We both got computers that we like. Clearly, we're still learning how to um, how to use. We're used to Word, but ignore that. Just a little scribble. Ignore the scribble. But and I also wanted to show you examples of posts because I know it's really easy in the beginning to just post, shake out. This is so weird. I count on me to be the one person in the world who gets a virus on their Mac. Okay, it, it it's fine. It. We'll give it a nap later. So these are just some examples of posts that we've done. I told you guys, I don't need caffeine. <laughs> this is me all the time. Um, these are just examples of posts that I've done. Make them fun. Make them creative. They don't all have to be about Shakeology, um, you know, challenges and coaching. The one about the chocolate chip cookies got shared so much. Cause, and it was made with Shakeology. So you kind of squeeze it in there a little bit without it being like, Shakeology is amazing. You all need to buy it. No, it's just like, here's some cookies I made using Shakeology. And my child actually ate them because I've got the only child on the planet who does not like chocolate and does not like Shakeology. So I had to find, I know, I had to find a way to sneak it in. And this is the post that Christine and I did. We announced that we joined teams, whoop, whoop, which you don't have to do, but it's fun. Okay. And then, no. Guys, you didn't know you were going to get a show, too, did you? <laughs> okay. <sighs> and this is just one of my favorite quotes in the entire world. Um, if you don't know who he is, Viktor Frankl, Google him. He was a motivational speaker, but what makes him amazing is he was in um, concentration camps for most of the war, and everyone in his life died but his sister. But when he was in the camps, he decided that they could take everything from him. They could, you know, take away his food. They could take away his clothes, his family, 
everything, but they were not taking over his mind and he was going to be the one in charge of how he thought. And you know what's really funny and kind of awesome about it? He ended up inspiring a lot of the Nazi guards. Like it's, his story is insane. It's amazing. And every test in our life makes us better or bitter. Every problem comes to break us or make us. The choice is ours whether we become a victim or a victor. You have to believe in you to make this work or it's not going to. And that was my light bulb moment. I was like, you know what? Up until this point, I've not believed I could truly do it. But now I do. When I talk to people, I talk to them like I'm a darn 15 star elite coach. When I, you know, do my affirmations, I say I'm like, I'm a, a you know, how, whatever I want to be. Affirmations are very important. I forgot about those. Christy, we're fired. And you guys can see, see those sticky notes? A lot of them have fallen because I buy the cheap sticky notes. <laughs> yes, those are all affirmations. And I know it sounds crazy, but they work. They, they don't, it's not something where you're sending vibrations out into the world about your affirmations. No, it's rewiring your brain because what your brain hears, it stores in your, um, um, the memory we don't think about. Um, yeah, that one. It stores it, and it's like a filing cabinet. So every time you say, I am confident, I am positive, I am awesome, it is filing it subconscious. Ah, I remember. And um, it's going to file it away, and every time you do it, it's just going to get more and more and more, and you will start to believe it. Trust, live in proof. Christy? I've talked too much. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. Um, I've been cracking up about everybody's commentary. Um, or popcorn and, and laughing and stuff. Um, but, yeah, what Catherine said about the affirmations is so true. I feel like almost every single day, somebody will – something will happen. Somebody will contact one of us, and it will be, like, something where we could get completely derailed. Um, my husband's been obnoxious. I'm sorry, <laughs> Eric. My husband's been obnoxious on some days. Um, I've had family problems. <laughs> I've had all kinds of junk happen, and we will literally um, talk to each other and just be like, "Nope, Satan's not getting us today. Our team is doing big things, and that's one of our affirmations that our team is going big places and doing big things." And I also have post-its all over the. Place. Like, I'm like, I'm going to write that on a post it. And so my office looks like a crazy lady's office. My husband won't even come in here anymore. Um, but it's okay. You guys, you just have to, you have to make up your mind whether you want this or not. And how bad do you want it? How much do you want it? You need to think of your why and if you're w willing to w walk on that tightrope. Because there's going to be times where you're like, forget this. It's too hard. I can't do this. But, um, it's not hard. You just have to choose to keep going. I mean, and I've failed a jillion times since I started this, but not really because they've all been lessons. So just get your confidence. I think the biggest thing in this is confidence and consistency. Do the work. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest tip I can give you guys. Do the work and don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple the whole kiss thing, keep it simple, sister, or stupid, or whatever, um, that helps a lot. So I guess that's what I have to say tonight. I'm sorry if it was kind of all over the place, but <laughs> that's how we are. Nothing we do is all over the place. Master I think the it's awesome. There's a lot of teachable moments there uh, mixed in with being super real, and then some, some shot-to-the-heart motivational quotes. So... Those that are on the call, type yes below if it was, there were some things in there that you are now going to be implementing into your business. Let's see who's awake. But thank you all so much for being on the call. I know that this is one I'm going to play back and listen to it again. But the thing that I, that I really wanted to, to, to just reinforce is that the actionable items are all available to you through training or the Coach Online office. And that's what's really cool about it. Like anybody can do that, right? But... You can do all the right things with the wrong intent or the wrong why, and it won't freaking work. It just won't. You can do the, some of the wrong things, like 
say the wrong things, do the wrong script, whatever, with the right intent, with heart and passion, and I'm never going to freaking give up. And it's going to work. And I think the biggest thing that happened when I've been working with these two very closely for the last year is we had some gut checks where they were like, I don't know if I can do this. It's not happening. I'm frustrated. I'm like, what is it that you want? What are you going to do about it? How are you setting your own soul on fire and, and taking risks so that you are inspiring? And inspiration does not come from sitting behind a computer. I can tell you that. It very rarely does. You might read a, night, a story and it's like inspiring and then you go, that's nice, like, or I love, love your story. And then five seconds later, you've forgotten about it because you're scrolling, right? Real life substance comes from getting out and living. So do the things that are on your list that you freaking want to do, and that will translate into the confidence you need to grow a business and a team. Does that make sense? So, all right. Thank you all for being on tonight. I will talk to you soon. Killer call to you girls, Catherine and Christy. Thank you so much. Such great leaders. Thanks for having us on. Bye, everybody. Bye. Emma, did you cut your hair? Ellen or Emma? Emma, did you? I cut did. Your hair? I went in and I was like, cut off the dead part. She's like, that's five inches, sister. I'm like, ah, it looks so good. Thank you. It's, I have to. I need to straighten it out. When it's straightened, it's pretty. It's it's okay. Oh, I used, I'm used to having this messy. Like my hairstyle is messy beach waves that are all like all lengths and all wackadoodle. <laughs> so it's really weird for me to have like a regular. A regular proper haircut so um anyway but yeah I just I was like I'm sick of it being so dry whack it off <laughs> I know I, I it looks good I noticed it too oh thank you you guys always see my hair in like like this yep <laughs> well, my hair <laughs> that's like every day and then sweat I mean sweat's like my go-to perfume so fit life Bit life problems. Yeah, I'm hanging on to talk to, to David Stagall about some things um, yeah. about growing the business, etc. So I don't know if anybody else wants to hang on, but you're welcome to. I'm sure David. Well, I was just gonna say, see you in three days. <gasps> I'm. I know. Jen, come pack for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Have fun. All right, Bye. Love you. It's funny when everybody clicks out because everybody's picture gets higher and higher and higher. So I can't tell. I think Charlie's gone. I'm going to remove her. And uh, RC0776, what's your name? Oh, and I think she's frozen. Okay, remove. Okay, hey, David, how's it going? Swell, how are you? Good. Did you get some things from that call? I did. I, I think I, I heard a lot of stuff that I needed to hear. Um, yeah, there's, I, I don't have, uh, there's not a whole lot going on, which is the problem. Like I've been uh, just kind of slowing down, hit a little speed bump in my momentum, but still motivated to do it and, and love it. Uh, yeah, just uh, normal, right. There's ebbs and flows. Like, yeah, but we can usually yeah. predict them. I'm gonna give you an an analogy you might get. So you can usually predict the ebbs and flows based on like your prior activity three or four weeks back. So if you look at your business activity tracker or how you're tracking, and you see the numbers there, that's probably what's happening right now. Like if you uh, had like two t conversations that week then that's why there's nothing going on. Um, and it's like with yeah. surfing, right? When you paddle out, you're like, have this crazy awesome momentum. Then you try to get up on the board and you do awesome if you have that momentum behind you. But if you're like, burr, 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 and you go to catch yeah. the wave, you're going to fall. Yeah. And yeah. And I'm, I'm not, uh, it, it's when I put the work forward or forth, when I put the work forth, I see the, um, the benefits already. I'm just saying, like, I'm going through a little a little patch where I'm not really doing as much as I want to do. Uh, there's there's some other, there's some factors into that, but I mean, what it comes down to is uh, I've been lazy for like probably the last two weeks.